Good morning, everybody. It's always nice to be in front of a group and holding you up before lunch, All right? So this will be a fun time. Um, as it says, my name is Paul Taubman. My company is called Digital Maestro. We're an online website agency, and we help with um, small businesses get visibility online. So who am I? A little bit of background about myself. I actually spent 27 years in the insurance industry. Anybody else? Anybody else fascinated by that? I'm a slow learner. It took me 27 years to figure out this is probably not the most fun thing to do. So I gave my notice and I started my own website company and this was about uh, seven or eight years ago. Now before that, I was actually building things up. I was building sites. I started doing things uh, like websites for community service, not court ordered community service, but just helping <laughs> communities out. Um, we did things for nonprofits. And as things started, my wife liked it because I was able to take her out for a nice dinner. She's like, oh, this is good. Keep working, keep working. Soon it became a nice vacation. We did a couple of those. And then at one point she said, you know what? You're working a lot. And I go, yeah, I woke up and I had two jobs. And I had to figure out which one did I want to do. So I talked to her and I asked her, I said, you know, what if I did this website thing? That's what I called it, a website thing full time. And she said, her eyes lit up, she was excited. She goes, what about insurance? Where are you gonna get paid? How are things gonna happen? And I said, well, just relax, we'll work on that. It actually took me about a year and a half to get her on board to saying, yeah, go ahead and do this. So that's kind of where we started. From there, um, I founded the company Digital Maestro. And as I mentioned, what we do. Also uh, got a website, my very first website was called All About Gratitude. And it was a passion project. Uh, it's still out there today. Um, I run the ultimate blog challenge once a quarter. We get people to uh, blog every day if they can. Um, it helps develop community. SEO gets people in the habit of writing. As well as relax social media. We have a social media management company. Now with all of these things up here, you can see content is important. How many people believe the, the, uh, the saying that content is king? Have you ever heard? I can't see a thing with this light, by the way. So raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. No, I see people raising hands. Right? So content is king. It's important to have good quality content. And a lot of people forget that word quality. So quality content takes time. I don't know if you've noticed that. Right? It's easy to put out some, some bad stuff, but writing the really good stuff takes time. And when you write a lot of good quality content, it just takes more time. So the idea behind today, what we're gonna be talking about is how do we write the quality once, get that good content, and then repurpose it in different ways. One of the things that's really good is that people go, you know what? I see you all over the place, right? That's a good thing, especially when it doesn't take you full time to do things all over the place and be all over the place. All right. Oh yeah, I'm an author, I wrote books and that kind of stuff. All right, so just if anybody's interested, you can get the slides as well as a list of um, things that you can repurpose. I'll, I'll provide that to you. Just type text the word repurpose to 42828 and you can follow the prompts. So that's 42828 and type repurpose. All right, so let's talk about repurposing content. Isn't that a kind of cool slide? Like they're repurposing the caps into lights? No, nobody likes, oh. The, so thank you very much for coming. Have a nice day. That's, all right. So what is, whoop, there we go. What is repurpose content and what does it mean? Well, content repurpose is really the process of taking existing content that you currently have and transforming it into a different format or medium. Okay. Now, when you do this, the idea is that you want to maintain the core message of what you're saying without changing it too much. You want to retain the valuable information that's in there without diluting it. Okay. Now, what we're going to be talking about with repurposing content, it, this is going to be for your website. It's for posting content on other websites. It might be for email marketing. Um, it might be for anything. It could even be print material dare I say, actual print material, something offline, right? That still exists. So the goal is to reach new audiences 
and maximize the investment of time and effort and money that you put into the original content, right? So you create it once and use it several times. So how is this gonna help? Well, first off, it's gonna increase your reach. When you post on your website, that's great. People that come to your website are going to see it. When you post it out on your social media channel, right, if that's the only place you put it, that's great too. Then the followers, the people that are um, your friends, depending on the platform, they're going to see that as well. But when you start to branch out and write it on your blog post, repurpose it, pull things out, and we'll talk about this, onto different platforms, you're going to increase your reach. Okay? Now, with this said, I'm going to give a warning out there. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of things that you can do. What I don't want you to do is a whole bunch of these things that I'm going to tell you about. Because if you try to do it all right away, you're going to burn yourself out. How many people here have a full-time dedicated team of five or more people? Raise your hand. Okay, a couple, but not many. How many people? Four. Three. Do I hear three? Go with three. Go with three, three, three. Anybody for three? Okay, three, two. Let's just drop to one. It's you. It's you, and it's you alone. And man, you're running the business. You're doing the content. You're doing the advertising. You're doing the accounting. You're doing everything. One man, one woman, many hats. Okay. So because it's just you or you have a very small team of me, myself, and I, you're going to need to figure this kind of stuff out. And by increasing your reach is going to make things easier to build your audience as easy as possible. Okay. Next up is it's going to be more cost effective. right? When you, and cost can be time. It can be money. Right? All those different resources that go along with it. You might see it as I'm saving. It's more cost effective to do this now because I want to spend time with my family. Okay. It's going to be more cost effective to take what you already have than reproduce it in another way and start from scratch. It's kind of like the whole acquiring a customer. right? It's cheaper to get a current customer to pay you money to do something than it is in most cases to get a new client. Improve search engine optimization. Now, as a general rule, when you're repurposing the content and you're putting it out on social media, or you're sending out an email, you're going to have a call to action that's going to get people to do something. right? Hopefully, you want to get them to maybe it's come back to your website. Well, if they're doing that, in the eyes of uh, Google, the search engine, Bing, and Yahoo, that's good for your search engine optimization because more people are coming. The more traffic, the more relevant Google will see you, as a general rule. Increase engagement. If you're just on one platform, you're going to get those people there. But when you start branching out onto different platforms, right? And we're going to talk about things like social media, changing your content that's on your blog that's just text, maybe changing it to video. Maybe you can do a live on Facebook or something. Right? You're going to get more engagement that way. And then the last thing I want to talk about here is extending your content life. When you write something on your blog and people see that it's dated, you wrote it last September, they might think it's no longer relevant. It may be, it may not be as relevant. But when you repurpose that and you publish it someplace else, they're gonna see that it's new, it's fresh, and it's more relevant. So they're gonna like that. They're gonna come back to your website and see what you have to offer. Any questions about anything before I go on? As a hush falls across the room. Okay. I'm sorry, please save, them late, save it for later. No, okay, go ahead. Yes. Do we have a mic? Yep. Well, go ahead, ask it. I'll repeat it. I've authored, so I've contributed to books about marketing, about uh, transitioning from full-time employee to part-time entrepreneur, entrepreneur to full-time entrepreneur. Um, I've been in books talking about um, websites, talking about security, talking about so many different chapters and interviews and different aspects of that nature, but I've never written my own yet. Yet. Okay. 
So uh, what are we at here? So overall, taking all of this, repurposing your content is going to be a great method. It's a powerful tool uh, to looking to maximize your content efforts and creating them and getting more out there. All right, so let's talk about types of content that can be repurposed. So what can be repurposed? It's a blank slide. Audience participation. What can be repurposed? What can you think of that you could use right now if you had to repurpose it? Video. Sorry? Video. video. All right. How many people have ever created a video? Okay, many of you. You can take that one video and you can do many things with it. One thing is you can chop it up into smaller pieces. Right? And then those smaller pieces you could add as reels. You can put them in different blog posts. How many people have done something like a Facebook Live and just left it on Facebook and never looked at it again? How many people never want to see it again? That's why you didn't do anything with it. Well, for your own Facebook Lives, you can actually download those videos and include those on your website. You can embed them. Right? So there's reasons why you don't want to put your own video on your own website. We're not going to talk about that. But you can actually have it embedded there so that it looks like it's on your website. And without doing anything else, you now have a new blog post. Huh? What else? What other content have you created? OK, blog posts. People have created blog posts, yes? OK. With a single blog post, there are lots of things you can do with it. How many people have written a blog post and just let it sit on your blog? Yeah, I've done that too. right? But when you want to extend that, you want to get out there, if your blog post is substantial, even if it's not substantial, let's just say it's eight paragraphs. right? could be three paragraphs. Typically, every paragraph has a nugget of information that's out there. Right, that key sentence that's talking about everything else, summarizing what's in the paragraph. You could take that and you could tweet that out. Each one of those can be a tweet with a link back to your website to that specific blog post. And now people are going to be coming back to your website when they see that. Um, with that blog post, you can also take that and turn it. We just talked about videos. You can turn that into a video. Did you know that there are people out there who would rather see you read that blog post to them in a video, in a conversational kind of style, than read the blog post that's exactly on your website? That's crazy. Well, that's the way people consume content. So if you actually were to do a talking head video, just turn it on, have the blog post on the screen, and you just read it, you can broadcast that out as a video onto all kinds of different platforms, onto Facebook. You can make that into a video for Vimeo or on YouTube, right? all different places. Then with that, you can take that and you can post it on LinkedIn. You can post it on Medium, all the other different platforms, simply by reading what you just created. How many people don't like to be on camera? OK. Does that mean video is out? No, 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 no. You can still take that video. You can actually have the words. There's software that, that will do this. Um, PowerPoint will do this, where it will just kind of put a, a sentence or two at a time. And you can just display that on the screen as you voice over. So you don't even have to be on video. And now you have additional things to put out there. And you don't have to recreate it. Yeah, you got to do some work. You have to read it. You have to create that video. Is it cutting out? Talks amongst yourselves. Interesting. Can you open this book? There we go.
got me. All right. So it sounds good? So nothing was coming up here? All right, so I'll start from the beginning. Good evening, everybody. Hello, welcome. My name's Paul Taubman. I'm going to repurpose what I just told you. Look at that. Oh, all right, where were we? Oh, video, yeah, yeah. So video killed the radio show. No, that was something else. Um, video, yeah, so you can take your blog post, you can do a talking head, you can you could actually do a video montage of just images going across as you're talking as well. Oh, I know what I was about to say. I was about to get into the point, this is why it cut out. When you repurpose content, there's nothing for free, right? You will still have to do a little bit of work, but it's not as much work as if you had to recreate everything from scratch, right? Um, all right, so we got videos, we got blogs. What else? How, what other content do you have? Okay, podcasts. Oh my gosh, podcasts are great. Now, before I move on, let me just say this. You could take your video, right, and you could broadcast it as a podcast as well. Just like you could take a podcast, turn the camera on, and you can do the same thing with video. You could take a podcast, you can transcribe it, and make it into a blog post. You can take that blog post, pull out those nuggets, put it on social media. Right? So all of these different things as we're talking about them, don't just think, oh, a blog post can only do this. It's really like, oh my gosh, it's like the web. right? Everything's pointing to each other and everything's a different possibility that you can do to convert and change and repurpose. Right? So we got podcasts, we got videos, we got blogs. Pictures. right? So if a picture is worth a thousand words, you got to write a thousand words and make a blog post for that picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, but you can do the same thing with those pictures. You can share them on multiple places. Um, when you, you know, we, let's talk about pictures for a second with your blog post because typically your blog post will have at least one image, maybe a couple of them. As you're repurposing the content, you can literally take that same nugget, that same sentence from the blog post, and if you have your featured image, you can share that on social media. Well, if you wait a couple weeks, you can use that same nugget, right? That same uh, word, that the concept of the site or the, the blog post, excuse me, and use a second image. And the thing is, people will remember the images more than they'll remember the words, right? Because the images has that emotion to it. So even if your blog post just has one featured image and maybe you were going, oh, do I use this image? Do I use this image or do I use this image? Save all of those because you can just use the same content, share it with a different image. And in that case, you have three times as much content. Anything else? Hmm? Turning it into an app. So that definitely is a possibility, right? Taking all of the content that you have putting it into an app, making it accessible that way, that's going to be a little bit more work up front, but it certainly can be done. All right, so what she's saying is in YouTube, the more popular videos that are coming up now recently are shorts. So you can do a short video of 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and really make an impact on that. You can make the same video or I'm sorry, you can use the same blog post, and again, for each paragraph, do a short on that, queue them up, you can schedule them, and before you know it, your social media for that is done, and you can build a following. You're gonna get more videos out there. Yep, Reels, same thing with Instagram. You can do this on multiple platforms. When you're doing something like this, right? Uh, there's a slide, I'm gonna talk about this later, you can do this in batches. So think about when you have one blog post, batch up four or five or six or 10 different shorts, your tweets, your posting to other websites, kind of get them ready so you can do it once after you wrote the blog post and then they'll be ready for you once you're on that. So you don't have to keep coming back. Oh, let me get another picture for this particular quote. Anything else? Yes, sir. All right, so the question was, how do you keep organized as we're doing all of this extra stuff? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're not on that slide. We'll get to that slide. But that's a great question. There are several different ways. Other content creation. 
You guys are bored with giving answers. All right, so we had blog posts. Been there, done that, talked about that. Infographics, right? An infographic, you can create, or if you have an infographic created, you can break up each different part. Everybody knows what an infographic is? Right, so an infographic is going to be um, one image, typically, that is made up of several different areas of content. So as an example, there can be five different statistics represented in sort of a graphical nature. Right? It could be a steps, five different things you have to do to, when starting your pet setting, pet setting, pet sitting business, what are the five steps? Well, each one of those steps that's listed graphically can be a blog post. It can be a short. It can be, they can be broken out. And likewise, when you have um, those five steps, you can create an infographic. There's systems and services and people out, out there that will do that for you. Ebooks. I know people are going, ebooks, oh, that's so, that's so 10 years ago. There's a lot of PDFs out there that people provide as either white papers, case studies, um, ebooks, however you want to call them. All of that can be easily created into a blog post, pull out the important pieces or shorts of bits. They can also be you know, transmuted into all of these other things that we've already talked about. Podcasts, talked about that. Videos, oh my gosh, look how good you guys are. Webinars, how many people do webinars or trainings? Yeah, just think about all the information that's in there. So many people go, I did a webinar, I did a training. Now it could be, um, they're often used as a sales tool, but you're still giving information. You can pull out that information only piece without the sale and publish that. But oh my gosh, if you did a webinar promoting a product and you're talking about the aspects of what this is going to fill, right, that problem that your tool or your service does, that's a great thing. Post that someplace else and have a link back to your sales page. Too many webinars just get, collect digital dust. Even if it's for a private training that you do for a coaching group, you don't have to give the world your, your content for free. Pull out pieces of those. Again, it's already recorded. You just have to chop it up and you can share it. Case studies. Well, I kind of talked about that with the ebooks. Case studies, same kind of thing. Um, especially with a case study, you can pull out pieces and use it as sales material on your own website. Presentations, kind of like webinars, or even if you have a PowerPoint like this, ooh, good idea. Make a note of that. Social media posts. Most people think, and as I've been saying, social media is when you start with your, your content, right? Your blog post, and then you tweet that out. Have you ever thought about starting with something that you posted on social media, especially if it was well-received? So if you've got um, you know, a lot of views, if you've got a lot of hits, a lot of shares on something, use that and incorporate it into a blog post if, there's, if you don't have one of those yet. Right? If you've done a quick live about something right, and it was well received, again, take that video, put it on your website, share it now. So there are lots of ways, lots of different examples. Are there more? Anybody remember David Letterman? Right? He had the top 10. I don't get paid enough. I only give you nine. But there are definitely more that are out there, different ways to be repurposed. Um, the key is really to identify what that core message is, what that nugget is um, from each blog post, from each video, from the webinars, and pull those out and use those into a different form or new medium. <laughs> All right, how do you evaluate the potential of what you've already written and what you already have, and should that be repurposed? Because here's a hint, not everything should be repurposed. Only your good stuff. And I know people go, well, I only produce good stuff. Well, even those of us who only produce good stuff, not all of it is good. It's like the saying, 50% of the doctors graduate in the bottom half. Think about that. All right, so how do we identify? What's the, the um, potential of this? Okay, so first of all is the relevance. 
Check to see if the content that you already have created is relevant. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of blog posts will write um, evergreen content, meaning it's timeless. It doesn't matter when it, was when it was written, it still is good today. Other websites, you know, depending on what your topic is, timeliness is important. So for example, on my website for Digital Meister, we, we post a lot of things that are you know, current events or things that are happening or we're talking about latest updates to WordPress. I'm not gonna repurpose content on a blog post that I wrote when WordPress 3.3 was released. Right? That just doesn't make sense. So that certainly is an extreme example. However, think about that as you're, as you're thinking about, is this something that is repurposable? Repurposable, is that a word? It must be a word. Sounds good. Popularity. Take a look at your posts that really performed well. Look at the analytics and the engagement. Was it shared a lot? Chances are when people like stuff, that's something that you should repurpose. Give the people what they want. Hmm. Versatility. Hmm. Is this something that really can or should be changed into another format. So depending on, you know, I'm gonna give you a warning. Everything I said, you go, oh wow, that's great. I'm gonna take all my webinars, I'm gonna transform it into blog posts and put it into social media and share it on Medium and put it on LinkedIn. Some of the things you do may not be as a good fit for the platform or what you're doing. Right? So just consider that. Don't go into it blindly thinking, oh, I'm gonna take this, this training I did and put it on LinkedIn where you had too much fun and people might see it as not being very relevant, not being very business-like, and they might think, oh, what is this here for? So look to see if that's going to be applicable. Your unique value proposition, right? Make sure when you do repurpose it, uh, or as you're about looking at things, is this something that's really gonna make you stand out? If it is, that's definitely something that you wanna do. If it's something that everybody else is talking about, well, ask yourself, is this gonna get lost in the noise of everybody else talking about the same thing? But if you put your unique spin on it and how you might do just something differently or train people on something a little bit, you know, kind of off what they're normally seeing, that's definitely going to be something. Right? How many times have you seen um, people talk about the new secret, right? The secret hack that most people don't want you to know about or just you know, the latest and greatest. Everybody's looking for the, the magic bullet. Right? Not the food processor, but something that's gonna solve all their problems. Mm -hmm. And finally, your target audience. Consider your target audience for, from the original content and whether or not that repurposed content on a new platform is gonna be as effective or not. Right, so this can be kind of used in both ways. If you're looking to expand your audience, right, kind of what we talked about earlier, this is a great thing to do. You know, with the relaxed social media um, team that I use, that we have for, for marketing social media, we actually create content for people, we do their posting, they approve it, it works out really well for them. However, when it doesn't work is when new clients come to us and say, hey, I just started, will you post for us? And that's kind of a double-edged sword because sure, we can create the content and post it for people. You can create your own content and post it for your people. But if you're just starting out, you might not have people there, right? You don't have all the followers. You don't have people there that when you broadcast, the likelihood that somebody's gonna see it might be small. So think about the target audience and what can you do to increase that view? Who is it that you wanna track? And, and market towards them. All right, let's talk about planning or repurposing. Any questions yet about anything? Other than I've still got your question about how to kind of keep track of everything. Everybody good? Yeah. All right, so planning how to repurpose your strategy or make it more effective. Okay, so we got some steps here. First one is, as I've already mentioned, reviewing your existing content. Take a look at what you currently have to determine which of those pieces are going to be good candidates for repurposing. Again, not everything's gonna be applicable. 
Okay. So when you're reviewing the content, actually, let me go back a second. All these things are what you should be reviewing. If I use this, is it going to be relevant? Was it popular? Can, is it versatile? Can I put it on different places? Am I going to be able to talk about what we do specifically? Is the target appropriate? And so those are all the things you want to take a look at with that. Next, and I just kind of alluded to this a little bit, is determine your objectives. When you're repurposing something, what's the reason? And actually, you should have a reason for everything that you do. Web clients come to us and say, hey, we're just starting out. We need a website. I go, great, let's talk about that. Why do you need a website? And so many people go, wait, what? What kind of question is that? Why do I need a website? Well, it's 2023. We need a website. And we ask them, well, what's the purpose of the website? Is it to be a destination for validation? Do you want people to search for you and find you and then see all your accolades? Is it to develop a community? Is it to develop just brochureware? Do you want to, right? What's the purpose? The same thing is true when you're posting on social media, when you're sending out an email, when you're sharing on different platforms. You should know what's the reason. So going back to those clients that are just starting out, when we're posting on social media for them, we're going to really be focusing on things like um, hashtags for the applicable platform because those hashtags are going to be searched and people who aren't following them will see that and hopefully they'll follow them. Right? So gaining new subscribers may be a reason. Um, the reason for repurposing your content may be for additional exposure. Right? So again, People say, oh my gosh, I see you everywhere. Is that the reason? Is it because you're promoting something, right? Always know what the reason is. And when you're repurposing, think of that as you're going through because things will be changed just slightly. Determine your target formats, right? So this is going back to when we talked about, you know, once you know your objectives and you're taking something that was a blog post and you're putting it on Facebook, um, how's that format going to be different? Right? Uh, specifically with images. Right? Each platform is going to be, have a different shape, a different size. You're going to have to redo those. So take a look at those. Do you have those, or is that something that's going to be need, need to be created? Adapting the content. Okay? This is where it's important to adapt the content that you have to fit whatever that target audience is or that target platform is going to be. Okay? This may involve doing a little bit of updating of the material so it's applicable for that group for that platform, um, depending on how you're, you're setting it out. It may actually be targeted to a different audience. And if that's the case, how can you change the wording for it to fit their vocabulary and then the way that they say things? Create a timeline, All right? So this is definitely important. Um, without a timeline, without knowing what you're doing, when do you think it'll get done? Yeah, it won't, right? Oh yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get to that, right? Or it's, ooh, I woke up and you know what? Today's a good day to email my list. When was the last time I did that? Hmm, right? Having a timeline and laying things out, having an editorial calendar, be it just a list, be it a Google Doc or whatever, it's important to know what's going out and when so you can keep track of these things. Determining the distribution channels. Now again, this goes, this relates to when I said, don't try to do everything. Don't take one piece of content and blast it all over the place because you're just gonna get burnt out. Pick one to start and kind of get that going. Once you're good with that, well then add something else. Once you've added another one, move on to the third one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, as you're going through all of this, Look at the results. How many people like to do work where it doesn't do anything for you? Like, I'm, I'm lazy, I will admit it. If things aren't working, I don't wanna do them, right? So monitor your results. See if this new platform that you're trying out is working for you. Are you getting engagement? Are you getting traffic from there? These are the things that you'll wanna check out and take a look at because if it's not, it might not be worth doing. Hmm. So using these steps here, you can help determine which pieces you're going to use. Um, you'll be able to figure out where you're going to put them, how you're going to put them. And don't ever discount 
what you like to do. We talked about video. If you absolutely, positively don't like to do video, well, put that like last on your list. Nobody says you have to. Maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't, who knows? All right, making your content repurposing efforts efficient and effective and make them work for you. Okay? Because after all, all of this sounds like a lot of work. I thought repurposing was going to be easy. Like I thought I could just write once and boom, the magic happens. Well, as I said before, it will take some work, but the whole idea of recreating content from scratch is not going to be there. So, I've already mentioned having your editorial calendar. Create a content calendar. All right, so this goes back to how do you keep track of everything that you're doing? Okay, there's software that will do this where you can actually um, have a platform that will allow you to schedule out your social media on different platforms. Okay, one of the things we have at Relax Social Media is that calendar where you can create everything once and then schedule it out, see where it is, and then see all the analytics right there. Okay. You don't need a system like that. You can just use something as simple as a Google Doc or a Google Sheet, the, yeah, the Google Sheet, and put what the content is, what platform, what the date is, and what the message is, and what the link is back to your website, right? You might want to put what the objective is. So this way you can keep track of where am I focusing my efforts and for what reason. Hmm. Um, so by doing that, you'll know which platforms and which systems to check for the Google Analytics, right? To see where the traffic came from for your website. You'll be able to check on the platforms to see what the engagement is, how many likes or clicks or shares. Hmm. Use templates. A lot of times when you're creating content um, for social media, using something like Canva or other tools similar to that, you can create your branding once and then just change the words, the links, and maybe the image. And you're all set with that. So that way, you know, your branding is done and it's once, and it keeps the consistency there for you. Right? So many times people will be posting things, and they're using one set of colors, then another set of colors, or it's completely different. The logo's here, the logo's there. Now, I'm not saying variety is bad, but consistency, ooh, ah. Am I starting again? Okay, here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome once again. Where are we? All right. Templates. Automate the process. Sometimes there are things that have to be done manually. Other times there are tools that you can automate this. Um, there are tools within WordPress and plugins that will automatically schedule your tweets or schedule posting something someplace. You can use something like Zapier or IFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
collaborating with a team. If you only have one, then you get to talk to yourself. Hopefully you're not arguing. If you have team members that can do this, that's great. If this is something that you can outsource, that's great too. Right. Tracking the metrics. I've said this a couple times. Look at Google Analytics. Look at the analytics of, of the platform that you're on. If it's not working, stop. The big question is, well, how long do I let it go until I know it's not working? Right? It's, I should have put the image. You ever see the image up there where the guy's got the pitchfork and he's just, he's going in the diamond mines and he's reaching and he's just, oh, there's nothing there. But two inches away are all the diamonds. Right? He just gave up too early. So that's just something that you have to figure out. You know, I would say do it for a few months. Try it out. Because especially if there's not a lot of followers initially, you need to build that up. But take a look at those um, analytics, and we're, we're going to talk about that. Repurposing in batches. Right? This is something that, as I mentioned, don't try to do everything all at once. Maybe you go through, as you write a blog post, and you start now going forward, I'm going to pull these pieces out so that I can share them and repurpose them elsewhere. And then maybe um, tomorrow or in a couple days, you'll do on something else that's out there. You don't have to go through your entire library of content that you have all over the place and do it all at once. And then finally, reuse the assets, right? So you've got those images, you've got the graphics, you have, um, well, you have the content, just reuse them. Even if you're using the same image multiple times, give it a few months before you use it. Somebody once told me, people don't remember anything after six months, especially when it's something like a blog post or an image or something that they see on social media. So if you reuse some of those images later on, you'll be okay. People aren't going to remember. We'd like to think, oh, everybody remembers everything that I write, everything I say. Yeah. That's only in my mind. I am so much greater in my head than you guys actually think I am. Look at that. Some of you agreed a little too much with that. All right, so by following some of these, um, these seven areas, you can certainly make your content repurpose efforts a little bit more effective, efficient, and maximize things. All right, these next slides. How many people are really into analytics and geeky things? Okay, oh, look at that, some of you. Next slides. Warning, the following slides contain lots of words. That's okay. All right, so how are we gonna measure results? Depending on we're looking for what, what we are looking for, there may be different places. So for engagement, where do you look for it? Um, Google Analytics, SEMrush, or Moz. Right? Some are free, some you have to pay for, but these are great ways to look at your engagement levels. Traffic, um, every social media platform typically has its own ways to measure um, the amount of clicks and likes and, and et cetera. But when it comes to traffic coming back to your website, Google Analytics is a great way to do that. Or I should say any type of analytic monitoring traffic type of device. Conversion rates. When I talk about, you know, is this working for you, conversion is really what it's all about. When you're posting on social media or you're posting on another platform or you're sharing content and repurposed it someplace else, your call to action to either go to a blog post to read or to go and opt in for a report or whatever it is, however you're getting those conversions, be it you know, sign-ups, if it's um, scheduling an appointment, if it's making a phone call, if it's a download, you can measure all of those to see how effective something is. Google Analytics is a great way to do that. Um, there's other marketing analytics tools that you can do that. Uh, you just take a look at those to see, should we continue with this? A lot of times people think they know things about your audience, but look for what are the audience demographics about this? Who is consuming your content? Right? What's the age? Where do they hang out? What do they like to do? By finding out this information, you can build your customer avatar. Everybody knows about that, I think. Right? Knowing who your audience is. 
But it isn't until you actually go through and look at some of this that you go, ooh, I'm actually popular with this group that I never even thought of. And then lastly with this is your ROI. Um, What's your investment that you're doing? You may be paying for tools. You may be paying with your time. Are you getting any sort of return on your investment? Are you getting more traffic? And getting traffic may be what you want. If it's more sales, that might be something that you want. But knowing how much revenue you're generating or phones ringing or emails, list building, right? Whatever you're looking to do, again, going back to what's the reason, that's what you're going to want to look at. So in conclusion, repurposing your content will get you more visibility. You're going out there more. More content is being put out there. They're going to see it. They're going to come back to your website or go and do what you want to do with that call to action. You can get more phone calls. You can get all those things, more engagement. You can get um, more signups. Again, you want people to say, I see you everywhere without having to do everywhere kind of work. It's going to take work, and it will be worth it. Take things one step at a time, as I mentioned. Don't do everything. You go crazy with it. Pick what you like first. If you don't know what you like, try as the the life cereal. Try it. You'll like it. If you don't like it, well, the heck with it. Try something else. See if you like that. Have fun with it. That's the main thing. I need a slide that says that. Have fun. So I'm telling you, have fun. A couple resources that I put up here, you want to mark those down, um, for just tracking some of the engagement, um, some of the ways that you can keep track of where your content is going and what you're putting things. You can put them out there. And then again, finally, if you want to just text the number 42828 with the word repurpose, you get a copy of all of this as well. So that's all I have for now. Any questions, happy to answer them. Oh, yes. We have time we for have the one question. One? I have a Nobody list. wants lunch. Let's vote. How many people want to skip lunch? We're having too much fun. Go ahead. I have a, a website that's probably informational heavy with lots of pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you suggest taking down a lot of the pages? I mean, it's almost, I mean, they've got different areas and subjects that people could access. And would you suggest slimming it down? or Because uh, I haven't looked at the analytics on any of it, but it appears that I, one particular segment I get a lot of calls on, but it's not necessarily a moneymaker for me. Okay. So you, I think you answered your own question. Step one, look at the analytics. See if people are looking at it. The fact that you have a lot of information out there may or may not be a good or a bad thing. If people are consuming, if they're looking at it, they're finding it, what you might want to do is kind of update some of those pages so that people know what to do. One of the biggest problems I see as a, as a marketing person is people have all kinds of great content out there without a call to action. So if it's content-rich information and at the end it just says, like, done, period, and you're not saying something like, reach out to us and call us to discuss how we can help you. Just a simple call to action like that is going to make people want to do something. Because without having that, people don't. They don't think about it. They go, oh, that was really good. Let me mark that down. Or let me bookmark it. But when they say, oh, I can call you and actually talk to you, then you get to work on your sales techniques and, and convert them into a paying client. I'm, I'm afraid of getting spammed. Yeah, so with something like the phone call, you know, probably won't get spam phone calls. Um, but what you'll just have to sort of handle that. If you're looking for comments, or if you're looking for opt-ins, you just moderate those. Uh, you know, a lot of times people go, I'm worried about X, right? And this is kind of fear-based that what if this happens? Well, what if it doesn't? And what if the right people find it and track you and they start calling you? So I would worry about that when it happens. And that would be something quick enough you can turn off immediately. 
if you don't like it. So again, go through your analytics, find the most top performing pages, meaning it's the most traffic, people are coming to it. Optimize those, put the call to action on there to see what happens. Well, thank you, Paul, for the great presentation. Right. I appreciate thank it. Thank you.